Hello, my friends. I want to talk about Chile. Chile's story over the last 30 years has been a fruitful and successful one. This story began in 1990, when Chile recovered in a peaceful and exemplary way our democracy. At that time, Chile's GDP per capita in parity purchasing power was only $4,500, which was under the average of Latin America. Since then, Chile's GDP per capita has consistently increased at a steadier and faster rate than its peers in the region, reaching now $27,000, which amounts to a six-fold increase. This figure is well above the average in Latin America and places Chile in a leading position in terms of human development in Latin America. We are fully aware that we still face many important problems and challenges. But these problems and challenges should never prevent us from appreciating the road that we have already covered. At the beginning of 1990, over 45% of Chile's population lived under the line of poverty. By 2017, through hard work, steady economic growth, and effective public policies, we had reduced that number to only 3.6% of our population, according to World Bank figures. Income inequality, as measured by the Gini Index, has also been reduced from 57 to 44 points in, nine, in 2017. Even though we are moving in the right direction, we are not satisfied with these numbers. And we are fully committed and we are working every day to improve these numbers, as well as to improve the quality of opportunity and the quality of life of all our citizens. The Democracy Index, elaborated by the Economist Intelligence Unit, which measures the access level to political and civil rights, has classified Chile as a full democracy, placing Chile over countries like the United States, France, South Korea, Italy, or Israel. Chile is committed to economic freedom. We know that the freer and more integrated the economy, the more successful it is. This vision has inspired us and all our decisions and to sign free trade agreements with more than 50 countries that represent more than 90% of the world GDP. In its 2020 Index of Economic Freedom, the Heritage Foundation has placed Chile among the 50 freer economies in the world, with a score well above many developed countries, like Finland, Sweden, or South Korea, and far above the rest of countries in Latin America. Chile lived its worst moment during May and June of last year, in terms of the coronavirus pandemic. We reach a peak of 350 new cases per million, and our health service were severely stressed, but it never collapsed, and was always able to provide the medical care to all our citizens who require them. And we were able to avoid the last bad dilemma. Today, Chile is going through a second wave of the pandemic. But we know that we have to be prepared. And we have now a stronger health services. We are implementing the lessons that we learned from the first wave. And we have managed to stabilize the number of new cases at a much lower threshold, around 200 new cases per million per day. As you can see on the screen, after the second surge in cases, the situation has already begun to improve. The number of UICU admissions has started to decline, and the same is happening with the number of deaths caused by COVID-19. Our strategy to face this pandemic was based on three pillars. First, we increased by three times the number of ICU beds available in our public health system. Second, we integrated the private and public health system in order to 
optimize the coordination and increase the efficiency of the health system as a whole. And third, we reinforced our strategy of testing, tracing, and isolate. We multiply our PCR test capacity by 28. We hire more than 10,000 tracers, and we open 10,000 rooms in health residents to isolate those that had been infected. Chile began its vaccination route early in May 2020, when we began our negotiation with the laboratories that were showing the most promising results in terms of vaccine. And we reached agreements and signed contracts that secure us over 35 million of doses for this year. We have also contracts and options to secure vaccines if they are needed to undertake a new vaccination process next year. This early work has placed Chile in a privileged position in the global context. Having access to the vaccine is only half of the challenge. Getting it to the population, particularly to those more vulnerable to COVID-19, is the other half. And as you can see on the screen, Chile is among the top four countries in the world in percentage of population already vaccinated. On December 24th, we became the first country in South America to begin the inoculation of its health workers. Our goal, our goals are to vaccinate the higher risk population, approximately 5 million people, before the end of this March. And our objective population, approximately 15 million people, during this first semester. As you can see on the screen, the economic projections for this year and 2022 are very promising, positive. According to the IMF, Chile will grow almost 6% this year, which will compensate the contraction of last year and will place Chile in a leading position in Latin America. On the screen, you can also appreciate the 2020-2022 growth projections made by the IMF for the region which also put Chile in a prominent position. At the worst moment of this economic crisis, we lost almost 2 million jobs, almost 20% of the jobs that we had. The recovery process began in August 2020, and by now we have already recovered more than 1 million jobs, but there is still a hard road to cross. In order to face the social consequences of the coronavirus and the social consequences of the global economic recession, we have built a wide and strong social safety net, which today protects and benefits more than 50 million people, which is equivalent to over 70% of our population. Our fiscal plan has deployed over $30 billion and has been regarded as one of the most ambitious ones among emerging markets by the IMF. Today, three out of four Chileans are protected, covered, or are receiving some form of help or relief from this social safety net, which includes the measures that you can see on the screen. Chile's economic recovery and the protection it has been able to provide to its citizens during this pandemic are not the results of chance but are the result of a strong fiscal plan that, as shown in the image, has been qualified by, the, by impressive, as impressive by the World Bank, and has involved 8.4% of our GDP. Chile's contribution to the world are many and are diverse. In the screen, you can see some of the main areas in which our country has made important contributions to the world. From the establishing of marine protected areas in the Antarctica to the deployment of fiber optic cable that will connect for the first time South America with Asia. Chile faces many challenges and problems and opportunities. Chile has become a laboratory for the energies of the future. Clean, sustainable energies. 
the north of our country has become a world hub for solar energy since the Atacama Desert receives the strongest radiation in the planet. The same happens with the wind energy, since Chile features some of the strongest winds of the planet for the generation of electricity. In turn, innovations connected to these developments make Chile a privileged place for the production of green hydrogen, which will benefit the planet thanks to being a zero emission fuel. Chile's future requires us to act in order to face and stop climate change and global warming. Worldwide, science has spoken loud and clear. Our citizens everywhere are demanding us urgent changes and we have the technology to face these challenges. Therefore, we have already begun our work by decarbonizing our power grid, by electrifying our public transportation system, by promoting energy efficiency everywhere, and by a strong plan of reforestation. The pandemic has accelerated even further the technological revolution that the world was already living. The whole world has had to implement new technologies from government administration, conference like the one we are having right now, to aspects of everyday life, like school classes, health services, and many others. Chile is currently working on the implementation of its five generation network, our 5G network. And also, we are working on a state modernization process that will place our country in a leading position for the future. Since October 18, 2019, Chile suffered a wave of violence never seen before. On November of that year, we proposed to the country, to our society, a triple agreement, an agreement for peace, an agreement for justice, and an agreement for a new constitution. This call was hit on November 15 by a wide array of political forces. And this agreement led to a constitutional reform that conducted us to a plebiscite on October 25, in which the Chilean people peacefully and democratically decided an institutional and democratic way to agree on a new constitution. Chile is avoiding violence and anarchism. And through a democratic and institutional process, we are conducting a constitutional process to meet its citizens' demands. As you can see, Chile is a good country to be born, to grow, to study. Chile is a good country to work, to live, to grow old. And therefore, Chile is a good country to invest. You are most welcome to Chile. Thank you very much.